Hi and welcome back to the channel guys. So, blowing the dust off, back on with the 89. Uh, off camera, I've made up a little piece that's gonna go into that rear arch. So today I'm just gonna basically get this put in and then we can call that side done. Uh, and what I might do is I might just skimp that course with a little bit of filler. That way I can kind of move on, if you know what I mean. It's kind of following my trails round. Obviously the car wants to fully weld it up, we'll get a full prep and everything like that but visually I feel like it's coming along and I feel like that helps me a bit. So I'm not gonna get anywhere close, I don't think, but if I can just get this welded in, that side's done. Um, underneath, when we get it onto another rotisserie spit, once I'm kind of happy with all the welding on the car, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna carry on welding bits and pieces up underneath. So I don't wanna go too mad because obviously I'm gonna heat up areas again. So it seems a bit of a waste of products, but I think visually I just need to do a light skimp off of it. It's only gonna need a little bit of dolphin glaze, so. It's not going to be too much of a biggie, but I've made a little panel up. So three plug world holes, it's going to go on that lower lip. Uh, bring you guys down and show you. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. Big thing guys, clean your metal up. No point welding rubbish in. Uh, this is actually a nice decent piece of metal that was cut out of the original rear quarter. So, you know, recycling, like I say, never throw anything away. So we'll crack on with that. Really short video today, guys. Just wanted to bring you in for little repairs. A lot of people ask about how I make stuff up like that. Um, so I kind of started to make it and I thought, oh, I better bring you guys in. But literally, all it's done, all I've done literally is make a cardboard template and make it out of steel. So let's get it in. So you can see there that is the uh, little piece that will go in there so like I say real simple nice and easy to make I've cleaned back the metal here um, and then I'll work my way through get well done I'll try and get you guys set up in some sort of angle so you can see it but it's a bit tight down here uh, and then like I say it leaves all this area kind of done there is a small hole up inside the arch but when the car's upside down I'm gonna deal with it then I'm not welding upside down again I'm sick of it so, let's get this in. All right, so you can see I've done the three plug welds and then stitched it all the way around. Really happy with that, it's tied it all in. Looking from the actual inside of the car, we've now got no visible holes, which is decent, no, not even a pinhole. That's gone really well. It really pays to pay, clean up your metal. So now I'm just gonna linish it all back and hopefully we can call that done. Right, I've got to say, I am pretty damn happy with that. You can't even see it's been done. So obviously it's just a first coat of primer on it and then the whole car gets stone chipped and everything. Buzzing with that. So this is that whole bit done now and I feel a bit better about the fact that it's all 
kind of finished but yeah so what i did as you probably saw trying to explain it a bit more so obviously i made that panel and then add to curve round here and then follow like a concave kind of weird aperture around there so i kind of tacked it in plug welded it and then you saw then as i folded it off i had miscalculated it so i just quickly snip a bit off so it sit flush with this line here and it's worked perfectly well so yeah we'll let that stuff do its thing really really short little job but a very very important little job so it's kind of tailored it all off all inside now the car it is completely completely solid so all inside it's just how it should be so happy with that buzzing all right so off camera i have um done a light skimp of uh dolphin glaze just across there just to kind of get my head somewhere close to where it's going to be so obviously the arch is going to come down there it needs another hole drilling but i am considering i've been putting this off for a while pretty darn happy with that so it's not perfect it needs like a little bit of a needs another skimp but you know it's really not bad there's a bit of a low spot there but it's well, you remember we had this bit missing, obviously the whole bottom missing. Um, inside, it's obviously all painted and ready to go and stuff like that, so pretty happy at that. But while I'm stayed here, and I'm kind of like, oh, what shall I do next? There's a tiny little bit of bubbling. Now, it doesn't even look like rust. It actually looks like a paint reaction. Um, so I can pick, pick this paint off, and there's actually like no rust. It just comes back to primer. So what I was thinking is why I'm here is we can get the wire wheel out, and then get some of this, uh, I'll grab that. We could give this a bit of a go. So obviously I'm gonna leave this for 24 hours to do its thing, but if I dig that out and make sure there's no rust in there, I can kind of call this quarter done. Uh, the only last bit would be this tiny little piece down there, which is like an inch. But we won't do that until we do the, finish the boot floor on the back panel. But this might be a next point of call. So yeah, a bit odd. It does look like a paint reaction more than anything, but we'll get stuck in with the wire wheel, see what's what. But the rest of the window aperture is really decent on this car, so let's get on it. So I used the wire wheel and got the worst of it out and then just kind of smoothed everything back with the uh, good old trusty silver line belt sander. Decent little thing this one. I literally like 30 quid on Amazon. It's decent. Um, so yeah, I, I'm quite shocked. Not a hole, no pitting. Yeah. So yeah, we're um, I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll get some of the fur tan stuff on it now and we'll leave it overnight and then we've got to clean it back in the morning but pretty happy with that so we'll clean all this surface up so it's got a thing and yeah we'll uh, start getting stuck in with it yeah no pitting look at that it's clean all right so it's time to try out this fur tan stuff so like i mentioned when i introduced this to the channel uh frost put me onto this to use so obviously i rattle through rust treatment and stuff like that but this stuff's got a really good review. Um, it's really easy to use. Literally, you can brush it on, use a little sponge, spray it on, which did really appeal to me, because um, when I do large surface panels, um, I'm just gonna put it in something like that. So that should make life a little bit easier. And you can leave it for absolutely ages, and, and when I say ages, months, um, as bare metal with this on it, because it's protecting it. It forms a zinc layer, as it says on the front. So we're gonna try this out. I've got an old 
lid there. Obviously, I don't want to contaminate all this by keep dipping into it. So we pour a little bit into there, and then we're going to sort that out. Obviously, wear gloves. And we're going to do the whole whole hog basically. We're going to leave it for its 24 hours and then clean it back. It says to sort of wash it back with water, which obviously does seem a bit weird. Um, but yeah, I've had I've used previous stuff where you use uh, basically how I clean it back is I put a bit of scotch pad in some water and just clean it back because it takes off any debris that this the product leaves but obviously I don't know what this leaves because I've never used it um but yeah really looking forward to it. it it really appeals to me all its properties just they write home perfect for me so let's get it cracked open gloves on brand new brush at the ready surface has been cleaned on the car as well very important um so it's like we've got a bit of a oh it's brown <laughs> um so pour a little bit in Literally a tiny bit, don't need loads. And pop that back on. Like that. Keep it all secure and not contaminated. Right, let's go over to the car. Right, so it's it looks really it's like creosote for a fence um but it's actually quite nice and thick but it's also in my eyes it's it's nice enough to apply but i think that's just going to go in all the crevices so i'm just going to lightly start dabbing it on and we'll, we'll watch and i'll bring you back in the next episode to kind of see how well it does so let's get the whole area there's areas like these especially on classic cars and obviously we're onto the minis there's areas like these where water just sits um you can put new rubbers in them you can do what you want but water is going to sit there so just get it right on that seam all the way along there because i've cleaned that back um and then just keep working it in one thing to note with anything like this is I'm wearing like I've got my mask that covers my mouth and nose um, I'll show you that in a sec of course I got that from frost I'm using that just because obviously these products are corrosive but you kind of don't want to be breathing it in either so we'll leave that to do its thing pretty happy at that so a little bit there I'm really happy that applies like I've used some before where it's running down the panel and it's just an absolute mess but that's what I'm trying to say the consistency of this is thick enough that it's nice enough to apply like it's almost kind of gel gel like to apply but it, you can see it it's going in all the little crevices so let's leave that alone so let it do its thing like up there look it's not run down off the panel and a lot of them run up off the panel that stayed perfectly uniform to it so Sweet. Right guys, this is what I was talking about. I was just covering my mouth and nose. It's it's enough to not make you breathe anything in. This is also available from Frost, laser racing. Um, yeah, it's just perfect. I have it in a garage right, when I'm grinding. You don't often see it, because obviously when I'm grinding and stuff, obviously on uh, time lapse, you're not really looking at me, but just have it over my nose. It keeps you nice and it's, and it's kind of, when you're welding and stuff like that, it keeps it uniform to your face which is obviously you don't want things getting in the way of what you're trying to do, especially if you're grinding a wire wheel. So absolutely perfect. I bought it right at the beginning of the last COVID uh, lockdown. I actually used it when I went out and did my shopping. You can just have it around your neck when it, it, was, and it was quite cold over Christmas and bang it over. So I'll put the link in the description for that. It's quite cheap. Just get yourself ordered one up if you want one for your garage. Um, it's, it's used for racing as well. So it's like fire retardant and things like that. So it's decent. Right, a little bit of a sneak peek guys got these out of storage so i have two sets of these uh, one set's probably ended up on the sidewalk as my temporary wheel while i do my split rims and this is the wheel we've got earmarked for this car so it's a bit jump in the gun but i wanted to get them out to give me a bit of a bit of a step uh but yeah i think they're gonna look sweet as hell in there so i'll bring you guys around quickly and just show you kind of how the contrast is with the color obviously they need refurbishing obviously they need good storing on the wrong one like that but they are a KN Mercury 10 by six wheel, a nice 70s wheel. Um, 
This whole car, you've been following along from the beginning, it's got a Mark II boot in, it's got a Mark II lights, wavy front frosting grille, like a Mark II Mini, overriders and things like that, and the bumpers. Um, and we're converting it down to 10 inch wheels because that's what we do on Simpsons Classics. So obviously this is my other half's car, but um, she wants it to look a bit more old school. And we're gonna keep the color with the night fire red and the black roof. I think it'd be a nice contrast. Obviously the car is originally flame red because it is a flame red limited edition car, um, but it was previously painted before we got the car. So. Uh, it's kind of, we're going to leave it at that. But I think these wheels will be a nice addition to it. Like I say, I have got two sets. Uh, so we're going to basically pick out the better set for this. And I think, save me buying another set of wheels, the sidewalk's going to run with the set for at least the rest of this year. While I refurbish the split rim back up and obviously get back on with that. So if you haven't seen the sidewalk, I will put a, uh, a little tab somewhere on here towards the end of the video. Um, and you can just check out the sidewalk if you haven't checked it out. Um, I know it's just not for everyone. She's a bit Marmite with, Quite a bold colour in the tartan, but it's what started this channel, and obviously love that car. So we're going to give her a bit of love. So I bring you guys now to show you the contrast between the wheel and the colour on here, and I think we call it that. So it's a bit of an odds and ends job. We've managed to achieve that a bit of filler in there to tidy that up and maybe feel better. This is now doing its thing, and you can already see it's starting to change colour, which is pretty cool. So any like minor pitting, it's kind of gone black, so it's found rust that I couldn't even see. So I bring you guys and show you that. I show you these wheels. So what we're saying guys, I mean obviously the ride height's gonna be like there. Ah, I'm only joking. Um, yeah, I think the contrast of that's gonna look excellent. So it's gonna have uh, black arches to contrast the roof as well. And these just these wheels just look great in my eyes. So I know they're not for everyone, but it's, I like kind of having something a little bit, a little bit different. So they're really quite a nice wide wheel, so, and they absolutely weigh nothing. They're so lightweight, it's ridiculous. So yeah. Let's get cracking. Let's try and make this car good enough so it can accept a set of wheels. We're obviously a long way off that, but thank you for supporting the channel so far as much as you have with it. And we'll crack on with more, but let's have a quick look at this third hand stuff because it's already started working. In my time, it's been about 15 to 20 minutes. So let's bring you guys up. So you can already see there, it's kind of gone, it almost looks green. <laughs> but yeah, it's doing its thing. And it's gone really kind of looks almost sticky like it's not ran so yeah obviously you've got to rub that off after once again guys thank you for supporting this channel we're obviously cracking on with the 89 now um i haven't shown you but on the board we've got our list of parts to buy which is a back panel a balance and closers a right hand a panel as we got gifted a left hand heritage a panel for this car um scuttle and closers two wings and a front panel they have all been ordered all we're waiting for is the back panel and front panel to arrive and all the panels are here. So a quick update on that. But yeah, we're moving forward. You might have noticed that I bought with the balance on already. Just to make myself feel a bit better. <laughs> and also keep it out of the way. So I'm, I keep knocking stuff around. I'm working in such a confined space, it's not the best. So smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up. It massively helps us if you give these videos a thumbs up because it helps us get noticed a little bit more. It helps share the love on uh, YouTube and across social media and stuff like that if you're enjoying these restoration videos. So like I say, a bit of a bitty video, but you've kind of seen a little bit of background of what the car's gonna look like. And yeah, let's crack on, move on. Uh, look after yourselves and I'll catch you in the next one when hopefully we're making up some bits and pieces for the boot area, uh, welding bits and pieces up. Got this to sort. Yeah, onwards and upwards. <laughs>